We are continuing our coverage of the failure of the repeal of the Republican Obamacare bill. The bill was pulled just a little over an hour ago by the Speaker of the House because he could not muster enough Republican votes to pass it. Now, President Trump has just made remarks about the failure of the bill, the failure of what was his signature campaign promise. He was speaking at the White House after an event there, and his remarks were taped by the White House pool. And in just a moment, in about a minute, we will have those remarks as they are fed out live. Margaret Brennan is at the White House for us today. Margaret, what has the president said so far? Well, well, Scott, the strategy here seems to be uh, trying to pin this on a failure to get enough Democrats on board. But as you pointed out, it was uh, the president's own party that wasn't fully supportive of this Republican plan to overhaul health care. Uh, campaign pledge had been repeal and replace uh, the plan known as Obamacare. And now it seems to be collapse and replace. That is betting that uh, the the health care system that is facing real difficulty in places like Kentucky and Tennessee will eventually force the hands and, because it'll hurt the public enough to have their legislators get on board with a new version of the bill. No timeline yet on that, Scott. Margaret Brennan, thank you very much. This is the president just a few minutes ago with his first comments on camera in the Oval Office. Let's listen in. Thank you very much. Uh, we were very close. Uh, it was a very, very tight margin. We had no Democrat support. We had no votes from the Democrats. Uh, they weren't going to give us a single vote, so it's a very difficult thing to do. I've been saying for the last year and a half that the best thing we can do, politically speaking, is let Obamacare explode. It is exploding right now. It's uh, many states have big problems. Almost all states have big problems. I was in Tennessee the other day, and they've lost half of their state in terms of an insurer. They have no insurer, and that's happening to many other places. I was in Kentucky the other day, and similar things are happening. So Obamacare is exploding. With no Democrat support, we couldn't quite get there. We're just a very small number of votes short in terms of getting our bill passed. A lot of people don't realize how good our bill was because they were viewing phase one. But when you add phase two, which was mostly the signings of Secretary Price, who's behind me, and you add phase three, which I think we would have gotten, it became a great bill. Premiums would have gone down, and it would have been very stable, it would have been very strong. But that's okay. But we're very, very close. And um, again, I think what will happen is Obamacare, unfortunately, will explode. It's going to have a very bad year. Last year, you had over 100 percent increases in various places. In Arizona, I understand it's going up very rapidly again, like it did last year. Last year was 116 percent. Many places, 50, 60, 70 percent. I guess it averaged whatever the average was, very, very high. And this year should be much worse for Obamacare. So what would be really good, with no Democrat support, if the Democrats, when it explodes, which it will soon, uh, if they got together with us and got a real health care bill, I'd be totally open to it. And I think that's going to happen. I think the losers are Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, because now they own Obamacare. They own it, 100 percent own it. And this is not a Republican health care. This is not anything but a Democrat health care. And they have Obamacare for a little while longer until it ceases to exist, which it will at some point in the near future. And just remember, this is not our bill. This is their bill. Now, when they all become civilized and get together and try and work out a great health care bill for the people of this country, we're open to it. We're totally open to it. I want to thank the Republican Party. Uh, I want to thank Paul Ryan. He worked very, very hard. I will tell you that. He worked very, very hard. Uh, Tom Price and Mike Pence, who's right here, our vice president, our great vice president. Uh, everybody worked hard. I worked as a team player. 
and would have loved to have seen it pass. But again, uh, I think you know I was very clear because I think there wasn't a speech I made or very few where I didn't mention that perhaps the best thing that could happen is exactly what happened today because we'll end up with a truly great health care bill in the future after this mess known as Obamacare explodes. So I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, it will go very smoothly, I really believe. I think this is something that certainly was an interesting period of time. We all learned a lot. We learned a lot about loyalty. We learned a lot about uh, the vote-getting process. We learned a lot about some very arcane rules in, obviously, both the Senate and in the House. Uh, so it's been, certainly for me, it's been a very interesting experience. But in the end, I think it's going to be an experience that leads to an even better health care plan. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Is it now your intention to go for tax reform, or what's next on your... We'll probably be going right now for tax reform, which we could have done earlier, but this really would have worked out better if we could have had some Democrat support. Remember this, we had no Democrat support. So now we're going to go for tax reform, which I've always liked. And you're confident in Speaker Ryan's leadership and his ability to get things done. Yes, I am. I like Speaker Ryan. He worked very, very hard. A lot of different groups. He's got a lot of factions. And there's been a long history of liking and disliking, even within the Republican Party, long before I got here. But I've had a great relationship with the Republican Party. It seems that both sides like Trump, and that's good. And you see that, I guess, more clearly than anybody. But we've had a, a great... I'm not going to speak badly about anybody within the party. But certainly, there's a big history. I, I think Paul really worked hard. And I would say that we will probably start going very, very strongly for the big tax cuts and tax reform. That'll be next. Mr. Sir, is it fair to Americans to let Obamacare explode? Well, it's going to happen. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, it's going to... Bad things are going to happen to Obamacare. There's not much you can do to help it. Uh, I've been saying that for a year and a half. I said, look, eventually, it's not sustainable. The insurance companies are leaving. You know that. They're leaving one by one as quick as you can leave. And uh, you have states, in some cases, soon will not be covered. So there's no way out of that. But the one thing that was happening as we got closer and closer everybody was talking about how wonderful it was and now it will go back to real life people will see how bad it is and it's getting much worse you know i said the other day when president obama left uh, they, 17 he knew he wasn't going to be here 17 is going to be a very very bad year for obamacare very very bad you're going to have explosive premium increases, and your deductibles are so high, people don't even get to use it. So they'll go with that for a little while, and I honestly believe, I know some of the Democrats, and they're good people, I honestly believe the Democrats will come to us and say, look, let's get together and get a great health care bill or plan that's really great for the people of our country. And I think that's going to happen. You could have passed a bill in the House without any Democratic support. Why do you think you weren't able to craft a deal among the Republican Party? Well, we were very close. We were just uh, probably anywhere from 10 to 15 votes short. Could have even been closer than that. You'll never know because you never know how they vote. But in the end, I think we would have been 10 votes, maybe closer. And but it's very hard to get almost 100 percent. You know, you're talking about a very, very uh, large number of votes among any group. And we were very close to doing it. But when you get no votes from the other side, meaning the Democrats, it's really a difficult situation. Will you reach out to Democrats now? No, I think we have to let Obamacare go its way for a little while, and we'll see how things go. I'd love to see it do well, but it can't. I mean, it can't. It's not a question of, gee, I hope it does well. I would love it to do well. I want great health care for the people of this nation. But it can't do well. It's imploding, and soon will explode. And it's not going to be pretty. So the Democrats don't want to see that. So they're going to reach out when they're ready. And whenever they're ready, we're ready. Well, and, do you feel betrayed by the House Freedom Caucus at all? They seem to be the, the most difficult thing. No, I'm not betrayed. They're friends of mine. I'm disappointed because we could have had it. Uh, so I'm disappointed. I'm a little surprised, to be honest with you. Uh, we really had it. It was pretty much there, within grasp. But I'll tell you what's going to come out of it is a better bill. I really believe a better bill. 
because there were things in this bill I didn't particularly love. And I think it's a better bill. You know, both parties can get together and do real health care. That's the best thing. Obamacare was rammed down everyone's throat, 100 percent Democrat. And I think having bipartisan would be a big, big improvement. So, uh, no, I, I think that this is going to end up being a very good thing. Uh, I'm disappointed, but they're friends of mine. And, and, you know, they got on. It was a very hard time for them uh, and a very hard vote. But they're very good people. You mentioned that there are things in this bill that you necessarily love. What specifically are those? Well, I think we could have things that I would have liked more. And if we had bipartisan, I really think we could have a health care bill that would be the ultimate. And I think the Democrats know that also. And someday in the not too distant future, that'll happen. And I never said, I guess I'm here, what, 64 days? I never said repeal and re replace Obamacare. You've all heard my speeches. I never said repeal it and replace it within 64 days. I have a long time. But I want to have a great health care bill and plan, and we will. It will happen. And it won't be in the very distant future. I really believe there'll be some Democrat support, and that'll happen. And it will be an even better bill. I think this was a very good bill. I think it will be even better the next time around. And I don't think that's going to be in too long a period of time. Anything specifically you want to see change going from this bill to the next? No, I mean, I don't want to speak about specifics. But there are things I could have, I would have liked even more. But I thought overall this was a very, very good bill. And I thought Tom Price, Dr. Tom Price, who, who really is amazing on health care and his knowledge, uh, I thought he did a fantastic job. Same with Mike Pence. I think these two guys, they work so hard and really did a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. A videotape of the remarks of President Trump in the Oval Office just a few minutes ago reacting to a major legislative defeat, the failure of his signature campaign issue, which was to repeal and replace Obamacare. The president went out of his way, as you saw, to blame Democrats for the defeat, but that can confuses the issue. The Republicans did not need any Democratic votes to pass the bill in the House today, not one. The problem was Republicans could not get together in supporting the bill. Conservative Republicans felt the bill did not go far enough. Moderate Republicans believed the bill went too far in cutting benefits to the poor. And so Republicans scuttled this bill coming up about a dozen or so votes short. John Dickerson is our political director and the anchor of Face the Nation. Uh, John, where does this go from here? Well, the president said he's going to go move on to tax reform. Uh, that, that's going to be just as hard. It faces all the same dynamics, all the same complexity, all the same factions that he, he talked about. It was really quite a striking uh, series of comments there by the president. He said at the end there that, that he'd never called for repeal and replace right away. He called for it on day one of his presidency. He said that he wanted, uh, he said, my first day in office, I'm going to ask Congress to put a bill on my desk getting rid of this disastrous law. Uh, he also said that this was uh, about the Democrats in trying to push Republican votes this week. He said if the Republican lawmakers in the House didn't vote for this, that Republican voters would punish them, would send them out of office. He didn't mention the Democrats. And the reason the Democrats were not a part of this is the strategic choice at the beginning of this entire process was to do this explicitly without Democrats. At the end of his remarks, you heard the president complain about Democrats passing the Affordable Care Act with 100 percent Democratic votes. He's exactly right about that. And Republicans were going to copy that strategy precisely. And so this was a fight among Republicans. Democrats were not engaged in the conversation. In all of my reporting, I kept asking if there was any opportunity to reach across. Uh, and everybody kept saying, no, this is within Republicans and about Republicans because of the, the choice that was made about how to get this through strategically uh, through the process. Uh, so there's a lot of revisionism going on here. And the question is, does that revisionism stick? Or do Republicans have a bigger conversation about the fact that the conservatives who blocked this from happening, they're not going away. They didn't disappear when Donald Trump was voted in. And now the question is, what are Republicans going to do about the disagreements in their own party? They are now the governing party, and it's up to them. Margaret Brennan is standing by at the White House for us. Margaret, uh, last night the president issued an ultimatum. He told Republicans, pass this bill today, Friday, 
or leave Obamacare in place. Uh, they weren't listening, and as we now heard from the president, it seems like the president is not going to stick with that ultimatum. He sounds like he's going to consider other plans for health care. Uh, yes, he, he signaled that uh, this may not be the all or nothing situation that he first described um, and that he may come back to the table perhaps uh, at a later date to negotiate another health care bill. He says that Democrats will be forced to get on board with or perhaps he'll be forced to reach across the aisle to get done uh, because he says there are going to be enough problems on a state level uh, with the health care system known as Obamacare that will really force their hands. Uh, the challenge here is... Uh, uh, throughout this campaign and the beginning of this presidency, 64, 65 days in, there has been a question about whether uh, the Republican majority in Congress would sort of unquestionably, unquestioningly uh, follow the president's orders, do his bidding. We saw today that's not actually the case, uh, that there is still this split within the Republican Party. And among the people who voted for Donald Trump, um, it will be very interesting to see uh, polling numbers referencing what they think about how he handled this. Uh, so far, there have been reports out uh, from Quinnipiac and others uh, showing low approval ratings in terms of how this has been messaged and handled on Capitol Hill. So we will see how much of a political blow this will be to the president, since this is his first real attempt at uh, a legislative uh, effort governing, um, and whether he, uh, because he spent so much personal capital on this, uh, Scott, 17 meetings meetings here at the White House, cameras in the room to show how invested he was. Margaret Rennan at the White House, there will be much more about this on your local news and our CBS stations and on our 24-hour streaming news service, CBSN, and of course right here on the CBS Evening News. Until then, I'm Scott Pelley, CBS News in New York.